Hey everybody, it's Mama M, and this is Monday, November 25th, 2013. Uh, I am here answering your questions uh, from the Pagan Mama Facebook page, from Mama M's Bell Book and Candle Facebook page, and uh, from all the other ways that you can reach me. Um, looks like a lot of people are already out of town for the Thanksgiving holiday, and uh, since this week is Thanksgiving in America, I want to wish you all a happy and safe one, and if you are doing crazy Black Friday shopping, um, be careful out there. Not everywhere is uh, friendly. <laughs> And I remember when I used to do Black Friday shopping with my friend uh, when we were living in Fresno, California, it was a little crazy. Um, people would actually get in fist fights. People would get stabbed. People, it was, it was bad. Um, but since I have been doing my discount shopping uh, for Black Friday, since I've moved up to the Carson City, Nevada area, I have found it is a completely different ball game, and it probably has a lot to do with the amount of people that are here uh, versus the bigger city, but um, it seems like everybody's generally pretty friendly and uh, willing to help each other out, which is really nice, and it kind of um, puts into perspective, you know, people just gave thanks for all the things that they have, and instead of ripping each other's heads off over a video game console, um, you know, it, it's kind of a give and take environment, and, and it usually turns out pretty nice around here. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. Not to mention, Black Friday is the day that the uh, official doors open for Mama M's Bell Book and Candle in Carson City. So if you're in the neighborhood, please come by and say hi. Uh, we are so excited, yet so, so nervous. So. Let's answer some questions. So today, Alicia asks, what is the best way to honor those that have passed? My firstborn daughter was a preemie and passed two years ago. I sometimes think my daughter is chatting with her. Um, there are so many different ways to honor those who have passed. Um, one is just a simple acknowledgement. You know, I know you're here. Thank you for watching out for me. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for watching over your sister, etc. Um, your daughter is probably talking to her sister. Um, my kids... Uh, when they were babies would always, you know, stare off into what seemed to be an empty corner and have conversations with people and get excited and clap their hands and smile and wave. And um, I know that, you know, my lost loved ones were there um, hanging out with my kids and, and watching over us. And it's just, um, you know, real simple and easy to, to do to just say, hey, I know you're here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for um, helping keep us safe. Thanks for looking in on your sister, things like that. Um, if you wanted to do some kind of a, like an altar or um, shrine type deal, you could, uh, you know, put a picture up of your loved one, leave um, spirits or partial to coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> uh, I didn't, uh, I thought that was funny when I first heard that too, a long, long time ago, but, um, you know, you could leave a little shot glass of something for someone who maybe was a big drinker, um, coffee, cigarettes, uh, anything that reminds you of them, uh, just as an acknowledgement that you know that they're with you and you miss them and, you know, having their spirit with you and knowing that it's there uh, brings you peace and that's just kind of a way to let them know without saying it as much but um you know i've said it before i'll say it again spirits can hear you when you talk they can hear you when you don't talk so the things that you're thinking the things that you're worried about the things that you think were left unsaid um all of that gets said at some point so um they are hearing you they know uh how you feel and uh, your feelings are acknowledged from the other side whether you see it or not uh, Brandy says, what has been your scariest experience as a medium? This is a funny story. So I'm going to try to make it kind of quick, but, <laughs> uh, the scariest experience, like I said, is a funny story because it's not scary in the, um, terrifying type instance, but it was scary because, um, it totally took me off guard. I went on a ghost tour of Virginia City, Nevada, which is one of the oldest settlements in the state. Uh, it's a really cool place. If you ever have the chance to go, you should go. Um, check it out, ghost tour or not. But uh, my parents had just moved here. They really wanted to go on this ghost tour. And I thought, well, I'll go with you and you know, see what they have to say. So the whole time, my dad is going, do you feel anything here? Do you feel anything here? How about over here? 
And it's kind of becoming a joke, you know, because my parents know that I can communicate with spirits and, you know, here are the tour guides saying, well, sometimes people see this here and sometimes people feel that here and yada yada. And I'm kind of rolling my eyes at some of it, but, you know, enjoying the history part of the tour. So it was really neat. So we get to this one area and uh, there's a big empty field and the tour guide is telling the people on the tour that um, if you take a picture out over the field, you're very likely to get orbs in your photos and, uh, you know, there's a lot of back and forth about orbs and photos. Uh, you know, a lot of the times it's dust or moisture. If you're taking a picture using your flash over a field at dusk, you're going to get bugs and stuff. I mean, most of the orbs are not real. So um, I just kind of stepped back and let people do their thing. And I was standing next to this tree across from the field with my dad. And all of a sudden, I just felt this horrible tightness in my chest. And I said, I can't breathe. It feels like when you're crying really, really hard and you can't catch your breath. And um, my dad said, are you going to be okay? And I said, yeah, I just got to sit down for a second. I mean, I just really can't breathe. My chest is really tight. It's, you know, it's kind of scary. So the tour guide came over to see if I was okay, and I told her what I was experiencing, and she started to laugh, and then she called the rest of the group back over, and she said, um, you know, near the tree where I'm standing is often seen the uh, figure of a woman, and she's crying and looking for her lost child, and uh, people hear her crying, people hear her calling for the child, people see her pacing out in the yard, and um, then she stopped and she looked at me and she said, how far along are you? And I said, what are you talking about? I'm not pregnant. And she said, well, women have this kind of response in this area. It's the maternal instinct. So how far along are you? And my parents both looked at me like, you know, well, you're holding out on us. Tell us, tell us. And I'm going, no, I swear I'm not pregnant. I am not pregnant. It's not possible. And um, <laughs> long story short, two weeks later, I found out I was already into my second trimester with my son. So... It was a bit of a shocker. Okay, so last question today is from another Alicia. Alicia, uh, how do you really get in touch with your cards? Um, this is something that I've gone over before, and I usually tell people, excuse me while I adjust the camera angle here, <laughs> I usually tell people to sleep with them under your pillow. It helps put your own energy into the cards. Um, but I'm kind of now leaning more towards make your own cards. If you create your own deck with your own two hands, you really can't get any more in touch with your cards than that. Um, some of you have seen my deck. I've showed it in previous videos. Uh, it is all made by hand and what I did was take the standard Rider weight tarot deck, which is the most commonly used and what I learned with, and I used their meanings to create my own cards that I sat and wrote hand wrote on a blank tarot deck which you can get from my website I'm not sure where else you would get it from um, I'm sure there are other places but I had never seen them before I started selling them so I'm just gonna plug myself for that one you can get them at mamamsworld.com uh, and you can come into my store and get them I have three decks sitting in the store ready to be made so a um, really good way to make sure that your cards are your own and they have your energy into them. Make them yourself. Um, my friend Erin uses a standard playing card deck and she will just scribble notes on each of the cards to mean something for her and then she does readings with the standard deck. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be with a blank deck. They don't have to be intricately designed. It can just be your notes on your cards. That will always help make them your own. So I hope that helps. Uh, I am off and running. I have so many things to do. Um, I just want to throw in, too, because I wasn't even thinking about it with the first question uh, about honoring those who have passed. I am literally making cookies right now. The last uh, dozen is in the oven, and they are my grandma's recipe. And I always feel her close to me. I always feel like I'm honoring her when I do that, when I make her special cookies. So, um, you know, that's that's another way. Um, my best friend's dad um, passed years ago, and he used to be really big on making crepes. And every once in a while, I wake up early in the morning, and I have an itch to make some crepes. And I feel like he's with me, and that's my way of honoring him and remembering him is um, making crepes. So um, that's my kitchen witchery, I guess, way of um, honoring those who have passed. So if there's a, a recipe you use that belonged to a lost loved one, think about them and think about your best memories of them when you're making it. Um, or a song you used to sing maybe to your daughter. Um, 
you know, sing, listen to it on the radio, do, you know, whatever you can, um, something that's associated with them. As you do it, relive those memories, let go of any kind of negativity, guilt, bad feelings, because none of that is taken to the other side. So there's no use dwelling on that. Um, but that's just a really great way to honor their memory is to get those memories out, dust them off, and enjoy them again. So I hope that helps. And I hope to see you guys um, come into the store and um, ask your questions for next week's Medium Monday. And um, we'll see you soon. Have a great Thanksgiving. Be safe. No cutting anybody on Black Friday. <laughs> Bye.